Welcome back and joining us on the show now is Mr. Vipul Shah. He's chairman at Gems and Jewelry Export Promotion Council. Mr. Shah, hi, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations, first of all, because you've been uh, awarded the most influential people in uh, global diamond trade for 2023. Uh, how does that feel? And also, how would you look at the industry uh, for the year gone by in sense of diamonds? Good afternoon, Manisha. Thank you. First of all, it's uh, thank you very much. This recognition is for the industry. Uh, because it was an industry decision and I was leading the industry. So I would not take this uh, recognition as for myself, it is for the industry. And yes, 2023 was a very difficult year. Overall, uh, it was a year where it started with the uh, Russia and Ukraine war. There was supply and demand disruptions. So the uh, and overall, the growth uh, means we, have, we were down by almost 25% as far as exports are concerned. Prices mm -hmm. and uh, instability. So a lot of challenges were there in 2023, then led it with uh, uh, this Israel and Gaza war. So we hope uh, 2024, we start with a very cautious note, as also we are also worried about the rising interest cost. And hopefully in 24, we see the interest cost in the U.S. markets coming down with the, by the Fed. So that will also help the uh, global economy as well. So mm -hmm. yes, 2024 should be with a cautious start. All right. Mr. Shah, as you said that the demand was down 25% in the previous year. This is domestic or exports? It is on the export front. Domestic market was much better comparatively to the export industry. Mr. Shah, we also saw the diamond prices decline, the rough diamonds, that is. And did that have an impact on the final diamond prices also? And has that supported domestic demand? Yes, uh, the main thing is uh, the prices, as I said, there was uh, supply and demand disruptions and that was the reason where the prices were falling. And uh, as an industry, as uh, we came together, we had this import, uh, we decided for a voluntary import closure for two months and that really paid off well. It stopped the prices declining and it really, uh, it really took the industry and helped us to uh, maintain our inventory levels and uh, reduce it gradually. And uh, today we are in a much, the industry is in a much better uh, health as well as the depth levels of the industry is also much better and very comfortable. We are just hoping China to open up and uh, once China open up, things should start in a better, better, better note. Mm. Mr. Shah, I remember having a previous conversation with you where you said that the demand from Middle East has been quite uh, better. So uh, the kind of agreements that UAE and you have, uh, how is the demand coming in from that part of the world? Yes, uh, Middle East been all com uh, comparatively has been done much better. And we are mm. uh, uh, hoping that our uh, Honorable Minister, uh, Mr. Piyush Goel, uh, looking forward for an FTA with the GCC country. So that will really help to boost the sector. And uh, I mean, the way UAE FTA has done a good, uh, good uh, result for the, uh, for the industry, I'm confident that with the GCC FTAs also, this will be much boosting for the gem and jewelry industry as a whole. Mm. Mr. Shah, there have been some concerns about the Russian diamonds uh, flowing into the Asian markets. How is GJPC looking at that and what's your stand? Uh, see, we are, uh, we are, that's the biggest challenge what we're going to face right now is with the new G7 protocols coming in place where uh, there is direct ban on Russian shipments. But as, as, as far as DJPC is concerned, this goods can be because we hardly import directly any uh, less than 5% of the Russian diamonds. So we are, uh, we are not that much concerned. So whatever goods coming in, uh, uh, will be kept separately and will be marketed into the different countries, into China and uh, other markets, uh, Middle East and other markets. So uh, I don't see any issue and gradually things will pay way for it. Mm. Mr. Shah, uh, as we start into the new year and as you said, there's a bit of a caution as you step into this year, but there is uh, better trade numbers also already starting to show up. There's budget around the corner. I mean, we know it's an election year, but with the kind of... Um, uh, you know, exhibitions that we saw in the previous year, which gave us good numbers. How are you looking at the first quarter of the first half of this year when you look at various other countries, the kind of conversations that you're having there? See, 2024, we are beginning on the 4th of January. We are starting with our IIJ signature show with the year. Uh, with this year, and uh, it will really support the whole gem and jewelry industry. It will support the gold prices as well, which is uh, currently, if you see, there is a lot of uh, volatility on the gold prices in the uh, gold prices also. So this uh, signature show will really uh, help uh, all the customers to come together. Uh, the demand and stability of the prices in the gold is also very much important for the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, overall, I personally feel. 
uh, this industry is heading towards the, I mean, I mean uh, we, we are seeing going to be the first quarter should be a good quarter comparatively to the last year. And uh, we are, I mean, so we see some kind of demand taking place coming from the U.S. as well. We have seen some good Thanksgiving sales taking place in the U.S. We are seeing some kind of uh, demand come, uh, shooting up from the Middle East as well. So hopefully first quarter looks, uh, uh, looks encouraging and hopefully uh, uh, Chinese market then opening up should also really help, the, uh, help to boost our gems and jewelry export as a whole. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, Manisha, thanks very much for bringing us that update. Uh, just want to wrap up the show, but before we do that, just keep your eye out on Aisha Motors, which just came out with its auto sales numbers. And uh, the stock has trended lower, so we just need to delve a little deeper in terms, of, in terms of the numbers. But as you can see, Aisha Motors is down around 2.2%. Well, with that, it's also a wrap on Halftime Report. Our business lunch will take all of the action forward, including the auto sales. Stay tuned.